What's up guys and good morning. Uh, coming to you live from beautiful, lovely Los Angeles. You can see the skyline in the background. My name is Bayan from Mental Health Nation. I'm a fourth year medical student and a future psychiatrist. And this video is about depression. So how to potentially spot it in yourself and anyone you love, your friends, your family members, and just basically to get you better informed on the disease as a whole. So depression is actually arguably the world's biggest health problem. In fact, it affects one in four women and one in six men. According to the World Health Organization, by 2030, depression will beat strokes, cancer, any kind of accident, and war as the world's biggest cause of disability and even death. So this video is going to be a super condensed version, basically giving you the must-knows, what you need to know. I'm coming to you in this video as a friend. You may need to see someone such as your doctor, your therapist, a psychiatrist, or even a social worker to get a definitive diagnosis if you feel you have the need for a professional opinion. So without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm going to give you the nine biggest tips, in fact, are actually what's used by professionals to screen for this disease in the office, okay? So things to keep in mind are these symptoms that I'm gonna mention have to be present for at least two weeks, have to come on essentially every day, and have an impairment in your life. So this usually means having an effect on your social life or having an effect on you at work. So in other words, impairing your ability to function in those two areas. And these symptoms must not be due to drugs such as opioids or alcohol or any kind of medical condition like a low thyroid as all of these can also cause some depressive symptoms. So sign number one for you or someone you know may be depressed is just having a depressed mood. So this is having a low or sad mood fairly continuously. And keep in mind some people will not be able to assess a sad mood in themselves and sometimes a depressed mood can actually manifest in bodily symptoms and these are most commonly headaches, abdominal pain, and muscle aches. Sign number two is what we call anhedonia. Now this is just a super scientific term or a way of saying you no longer have interest or pleasure in doing things, particularly in things you used to find pleasurable before. Sign number three, this is gonna sound super harsh and I'm gonna clump these together, but it's feeling in a certain way. So this certain way would be feeling hopeless, worthless, guilty, or constant pessimism. I also want to note that these signs are especially important if they're different from your baseline. So if you were, you know, happy-go-lucky for most of your life and all of a sudden for the past few weeks you're feeling, you know, hopeless or worthless, that's especially a red flag. Sign number four, constant fatigue or low energy. So depression, the way I like to think about it, is it literally slows everything down versus something like mania where everything is heightened up and you may be you know kind of just moving around and can't stay still depression can you know often be the opposite so you can have low energy and fatigue so you don't feel like getting up and doing anything in a similar way the way it's kind of decreasing your physical uh, attributes it could be decreasing your mental kind of qualities or strengths as well so tip number five is low concentration low decisiveness and a decreased ability to think clearly. Sign number six is related to food. So you're either overeating and causing weight gain or undereating and causing weight loss. So any kind of change in your appetite can potentially be a red flag for depression as well. So sign number seven is important. It's having suicidal ideations. So any kind of recurrent thoughts of suicide or death in this event, it's extremely important to call 911 immediately or go to your hospital immediately. Do whatever you can to keep yourself safe. Okay, I repeat again, that's very important. Sign number eight would be restlessness or irritability. So depression can actually come kind of corkscrewed together, twisted with anxiety. They usually, or they can go together quite often. So sometimes the anxiety component of depression can manifest as irritability but also you can have a slowing of the body as well, so as we call psychomotor retardation. And lastly, sign number nine would be difficulties or changes in your sleep. So this can include undersleeping, which is more common, but can also include 
oversleeping as well. So any kind of changes in your sleeping patterns should also raise some concern. Now keep in mind, you don't need all nine of these symptoms to be considered depressed. All you really need is actually five of the nine. If you have five of the nine symptoms we just talked about, you may qualify to be undergoing a major depressive episode and may even qualify for major depressive disorder. So if you feel you or someone else you need needs professional advice, I recommend you seek it. The earlier you get treatment, the better. This video was simply about identifying depression. It wasn't really meant to go into what you can do if you're depressed, but I feel kind of short handing you guys if I don't get into some of those briefly. Very quickly, I'll just give you five quick tips that can boost your mood at any time. Number one, it's important to believe you can beat this disease. Many people have, many people continue to will, but that kind of mindset can lead to a positive self-fulfilling prophecy and will help things throughout your life down the line, especially when it comes to this. Number two, find the light at the end of the tunnel and stay focused with it. Buddha had a quote, you are your thoughts, so why not think about positive things versus negative things. Number three, avoid victimhood. So a lot of the stress and the pressure we put on ourselves is actually arbitrary and not needed. So don't always be addicted and obsessed with being the victim in your life, even if you have been. Number four, stay thinking long term. Life is a process, so remain process oriented. Nothing is going to happen overnight. And number five, remain grateful. Gratitude is super, super important. Any self-development guru will echo the same. So every day, try to find at least three things you're grateful for every single day. If you'd like to see a more thorough video on what you can do to ease your depression or even potentially beat it, like this video and I promise I'll make another one in the future. So thank you for watching this video. If you found this helpful at all, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.